Those are the display, the speed, and the price. So I'll just go ahead and get the price out the way real quick. Right off the top, this phone starts at 669. Nice, so that's, that's your context for this. Let's remember that number going forward. So it's actually worth starting on the build because this phone is actually a pretty big step up from any other OnePlus phone. First of all, it's huge. It's all screen with this 6.67 inch display, rounded corners, and this new color, Nebula Blue. So it's this little sort of half gradient that catches the light kind of nice. And overall, materials are pretty premium with metal and glass, and it feels rock solid in the hand, but it still has the signature OnePlus cutouts, no wireless charging still, no headphone jack, and no official IP rating for water resistance. But then again, OnePlus literally posted a video of them dropping it into a bucket of water. So, you know, make of that what you want. But also it is matte, not glossy. And the truth is phones don't have to be glossy to be slippery. So this matte phone is also, because of its shape, one of the slipperiest. Your best shot at protecting it would be something like this from our channel sponsor, Dbrand. This is the grip case available on their site. So it's worth a look, especially now that you have the glass of the phone going right up all the way to the edges. So I'll leave a link to this below. Anyway, like I said, there are some specific things that make this phone stand out aside from the price, and those are the display and speed. Let's start with the display. So this phone, OnePlus 7 Pro, has the first 90 hertz, 1440p OLED display in any phone anywhere and boy, does it look good. So when we first got those gaming phones, like the Razer phone and the Asus ROG phone with those high refresh rate displays, I said right away, I wanna see more of these, but those were all LCD displays at that time. There were no high refresh rate OLEDs. This 90 Hertz OLED has absolutely spoiled me for the weeks I've been using it to the point where I don't really wanna to go to anything else. It's pretty bright. It's not as crazy bright as Samsung's phones, but it's enough to be viewable in pretty much any environment. It's HDR plus certified. It's pretty color accurate with adjustability if you wanna make it more or less vibrant. And it's huge. It's a 6.7 inch diagonal. It's just great. And the shape of it, as you can see, is definitely new for OnePlus, following in the footsteps of the Samsungs and Huawei's before, where now the glass sort of melts over the sides onto the metal rails of the side of the phone. This is the type of thing I've expressed mixed feelings on, just because it makes the phone more fragile and you get a couple accidental touches now and then, but you get this modern full screen bezel -less look anyway. And then of course, with no bezels and no notch, you might be asking, where's the front facing stuff? Well, the pretty decent earpiece speaker grill is up at the top in this slot. And the fingerprint reader, again, is an optical one right behind the glass that this time is 30% larger and feels just a half step quicker, which is pretty nice. And the selfie camera is, yes, a pop-up style camera that we've seen in a couple other phones in the last year. And I gotta break out the magnet paper again to show exactly where the speaker driver is. It's not the full width of the whole speaker grill. And it also shows another magnet in the pop-up camera mechanism that moves up and down when you activate it, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie, the more you know. But really, let's be real, this screen is all about the refresh rate. They call it Fluid AMOLED, which I guess is a pretty fitting name. So really the question is, can normal people tell the difference between this 90 hertz smoothness and the typical 60 hertz. And I don't know about you, but for me, the answer is 100% yes. And it's especially in things like scrolling, uh, pretty much any animation, and then of course, inside all of the games and apps that support it. Then again, I'm also the person who thinks 24 FPS looks choppy compared to 30, so maybe I'm not the typical set of eyes, but I see it every single day and I absolutely love this screen. Matter of fact, I think between the size of the thing and the fact that it's OLED, and it's 1440p, and the total lack of any notch or any cutouts, and the fact that it's a 90 hertz refresh rate means this is now my favorite screen in any phone, straight up. And, and it's just so important to making this phone feel so crazy fast and smooth. Okay, so there are some other things that make this phone feel even faster on top of that display. First of all, the specs, Snapdragon 855 and up to 12 gigs of RAM. The one I'm reviewing is maxed out with storage and RAM. You'd expect any phone with that spec sheet to be fast, and it is. Warp Charge 30, which is its incredibly fast wired charging. It almost, for me, makes up for the lack of wireless charging because it's just so fast that anytime the battery gets even a little bit low, I just plug in for a couple minutes and I'm good. It can charge from zero to almost half battery in 20 minutes. Even the car charger is extremely fast. So yeah, I still wish it had wireless charging, 
but not having it, this is the next best thing. And then this USB-C port supports USB 3.1, so data transfer speeds are faster if you do a lot of that. And then, this is the first phone shipping, since the Galaxy Fold isn't yet, RIP for now, uh, with UFS 3.0 storage. So the internal read-write speeds to that storage benefit a lot. That's even a little bit underrated. That's a big usability difference for this phone. So all these things on the same phone, along with the 90 hertz display, make the OnePlus 7 Pro the most responsive, snappy, fluid phone I've ever used. Consistently, like this whole phone has been butter. Actually, now that OnePlus has done this, I'm starting to really hope that the next iPhone has a super high refresh rate OLED like this. That would be sick. We gotta talk about battery life though, because as it turns out, you can't have a giant, bright, high res, 90 hertz OLED and amazing battery life. So on paper, the OnePlus 7 Pro has a pretty promising 4,000 milliamp hour battery, but it becomes pretty obvious the 90 hertz refresh rate hits the battery pretty hard because I've constantly been getting like four, maybe four and a half hours of screen on time tops, which is not that great, especially for a big battery like this. For comparison, that Huawei P30 Pro, the you know, the battery champ, that was getting me like seven, seven and a half hours of screen on time. So by comparison, this one, not so great. So knowing that the 90 hertz refresh rate is the main reason for this, a couple things to note. One, you can turn it to 60 hertz and you will see an improvement in battery life. But I never really wanna do that because the 90 hertz has spoiled me so much. That's a big part of why I love the phone. Two, unlike the iPad Pro, which has a variable refresh rate, once you set this phone's refresh rate to 90 hertz, it's locked at 90 hertz all the time, never drops. If you go to the home screen or if you're in a game or anywhere in between, it is locked at 90 hertz. And I talked to OnePlus about that and they said they're working on a software update to possibly enable dynamic refresh rate, which would help the battery situation, but we'll have to see about that, fingers crossed. And three, in the meantime, they do have what's called dynamic resolution, which means it'll be at full resolution most of the time, but it scales down to 1080p when you're playing 1080p content or in a 1080p game, so this can help a bit. Okay, so the big letdown for a lot of OnePlus phones for the past couple years that have prevented me and others from saying they're really flagship quality is the cameras. So OnePlus has gone with a new camera system for the OnePlus 7 Pro this year. So it's three cameras on the back. One standard 48 megapixel camera with an f1.6 aperture and OIS. Then a three times telephoto eight megapixel camera at f2.4 with OIS. And an ultra wide angle 16 megapixel, no OIS at f2.2. So this is the hot new triple camera setup all the cool kids are rocking this year. Samsung, LG, Huawei, probably the new iPhone later this year probably pretty much everyone except the Pixel. It's still the biggest weakness of this phone, but at least it's not as drastic as before. Like it's definitely not some horrible camera. In fact, it's good enough for most people. Uh, the, the telltale shots from the OnePlus 7 Pro's camera have plenty of detail thanks to the resolution. They're inconsistent with exposure though, and it tends to bias towards overexposure, sometimes blowing out highlights and not saving them with dynamic range. And very little of the image is ever in actual dark or shadow, kind of like what Huawei's been doing. Uh, but they still look fine for most of the time, especially in daylight or anytime you have ideal conditions with lots of light. Uh, it just can feel a little off when the scene's a little darker or when there's not ideal lighting. And the color science is okay. Nightscape did work pretty well to subtly bring back shadow information and detail in night shots. Disappointing for me though was the ultra wide camera. It's noticeably softer than the main camera and was slower to focus and had white balance inconsistency with the main camera, so I just had a lot less confidence getting a good crisp shot with the ultra wide. But the perspective is still cool, so I'm glad they did it, but I wish that sensor was better. Now I have a pretty good feeling history is gonna repeat itself and someone's gonna build a Google camera mod for the OnePlus 7 Pro like they did with previous OnePlus phones, and it's gonna take better photos with better exposure and better dynamic range and better image processing and night sight and all that. Um, but until that happens, yeah, uh, the camera is definitely still the weakest part of the OnePlus 7 Pro, which is fascinating because the software otherwise has been one of the strongest parts of their phones for years. Oxygen OS has been great. It's this clean, lightweight, and smooth, and it definitely still adds a lot of features that I like that sort of tie in nicely with the hardware. This phone, under the radar, just upgraded their haptic vibration motor to be excellent, right up there with as good as the Pixel, as, as the best in any Android phone. There's some leaks about it being like 200% stronger or something like that. Which, I mean, maybe that is true, but it's not really about how strong it is, it's about how precise it is, like how tight that feedback can actually be. And this one's great. It's not as good as the iPhone, but no one is, 
so this one's good. So with the software, they let you customize the haptics and the settings. They also let you customize what icons show up in your notification bar at the top, one by one. I love that. They built in face unlock in case you want to use that pop-up camera, but I wouldn't recommend it because they actually already don't want you using the pop-up camera too much. It's rated for 300,000 opens and closes, but you know, using it every time you unlock your phone all day, every day is a lot. Plus it's just an RGB camera, so it's not as secure as Face ID. So just go with the fingerprint reader. But what's cool is in the software they built in automatic free fall detection. So if you're taking a selfie or you just unlock the phone or it's just popped out for whatever reason and you drop the phone, it'll automatically close that mechanism to protect itself from breaking if it lands the wrong way. That is actually really smart, good luck. You can customize exactly what the alert slider modes will do to fine tune it to your use. And you can turn on or off a long press of the power button to activate Google Assistant if you wanna use that as a custom button. Or you can long press the software home button to get there. There's also now a built-in high quality 60 hertz screen recorder. But this is something Android phones all kinda of should have. It seems like the Pixel and stock Android is gonna be last to get that, but it's great to see it here. And then there's a lot of just other good customization built on top of what's already been a pretty lightweight and clean and usually pretty early for software updates skin. So that's why I've been a fan of Oxygen OS on the OnePlus phones for so long. All right, so remember at the beginning of the video when I asked you to remember the starting price of this phone in your head? Remember, 669, did you actually remember that? It's tough because throughout this review, it's so easy to just compare it to the familiar flagships, you know, just like I did, the Galaxy S10, the iPhone XS Max, and others, P30 Pro, but those phones all start at or around a thousand bucks. So actually in 2019, a base price of at or under 700 bucks is actually pretty massively undercutting those phones. So somehow OnePlus growing up and making their most expensive phone of all time by far is actually because of the landscape in 2019, still looking like a pretty good deal. Bottom line, I think people are gonna really like this phone. And it's because of those main things I talked about at the beginning, it's the display, the speed, and that price. The display is awesome, the speed is incredible, and the price is low. But mainly it's the speed, this phone is silly fast. Not to mention it's gonna be in a bunch of stores now as like the only phone with a fully bezel-less display and that pop-up camera, that's gonna catch some eyes. So all these factors make it not just the most expensive phone they've ever made, but as a company for OnePlus, the most important phone they've ever made. And I think they've done a killer job. Hey, if speed kills, this one's a killer. So I can't wait for the Google camera mod to make this even better. But until then, this is my daily driver from this point forward. I'm really into this phone and I recommend it for anyone who's also interested in speed. Anyway, until the next one, let me know what you think of the OnePlus 7 Pro. We can hang out in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.